Legends tell of six Toa heroes who fought evil and faded away into history. But legends never die and they shall rise again. Now the Toa have returned to fight evil. United they stand, destined to find the masks of power in order to fulfill their duty to protect the island of Okoto. This is Bionicle Week. Day 6, Pohatu, Master of Stone, and the Protector of Stone. Hello, this is Sanad here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week. Today we'll be taking a look at Pohatu, the Master of Stone, and the Protector of Stone. Here's our packaging, and as typical to these reviews, uh, we are at the point of the packaging looks about the same. It's just we have this nice desert region, uh, the stone region of Okoto is a desert, which is kind of neat. And I love the artwork still. It's still great. You know, uh, Protector of Stone is $10 and 67 pieces, and Pohatu is 66 Kind of an interesting reversal there. Uh, mostly, I think, because this gets bullets, but yeah, we'll take a look at that. Plus, I do like the uh, cameo by Lord of Skull Spiders over here. That was kind of neat. Anyways, without further ado, let's take a look. So here we have Pohatu, the Master of Stone. This is our last toe of the first wave, unfortunately. So sad. But he is quite the cool one. I did save him for last, as I feel like he is one of the more unique uh, toe of them all. First of all, uh, his comic. I do want to show it off. Uh, we have another reversal. It shows the boomerangs using his feet as stormerangs, and then turning into jetterangs. Um, and the instructions show you build those first. Um, so there is that, and the here is the instruction showing them on his feet this way. I'm going to be doing it a little differently, but we will get to that when we get to the weapons. Um, but that out of the way, let's take a look at Pohatu. He is the shortest of the Toa, uh, just like his original <laughs> Toa Mata and Nuva counterparts. Um, as you can see, he's got a nice print chest decal. The thing I really like about him is his asymmetrical design. He's got just one shoulder pad over here and these spikes with brown. And this arm's all silver and it's got black joints while well, this has clear uh, green joints. That's pretty nice. Um, as you can see, he's also got nice beefed up legs. Um, he is meant to brave the sandy weather and it looks pretty good. Uh, he looks very adapted. And On the back here you can see he's got gear. Uh, now, he is like... Uh, Kopaka and Gali, just one geared, so he does have one single arm gear, um, which works well, I mean, it stays, and there you go, he's got an arm gear. But other than that, his articulation, shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, ankles, head, or, or mask, uh, I mean, he has mask flying powers, if you, if you bump it wrong. Anyways, uh, so he's got all that, uh, he's got the same articulation, he's just a little shorter, um, but that's okay, because his weapons are super cool. First of all, we're going to put bring these in. These are his Stormerangs or his Jetterangs, depending on what position they're in. Um, now, the animations show them closed like this on the front of his foot. I'm going to go with that, because it looks better than them uh, like this and split open halfway. and It's kind of weird. I'm just going to do that, because that works better. Um, these allow him to summon tornadoes, in addition to falling apart. Uh, and allowing him to traverse the desert pretty well. Um, so they just plug down in his feet like this and to make sure that he's not completely unarmed they give you this the end of a, of a Rakshi staff. Now it's a knife uh, he can either hold it like this and swing it like that um, as a little knife or you know you can just kind of flip it around and have it as a backhanding knife just to be carving up skull spiders. It works really well. I do like the look of it. Um, it works really well as a knife, I must say. Um, but yeah, the weapons as feet claws are, are pretty neat. I, I do like them. Um, they work really well in conjunction with the articulation. Like, even the gear system works with the, the arm swinging down, uh, which is pretty neat. But yeah, he's he's well stable. I mean, he's not going to tip him back a little bit. He'll fall, but I mean, he's, for the most part, pretty stable with these things, and that's pretty cool. Um, but... Alas, we need to change out his mask and change up his weapon. So here's his golden mask. Same mask, just gold, like that. So we just remove this. Now this is instructed to plug on the back here just straight on. I like to remove it and put it at an angle like this, just kind of like he stuck it behind him. 
um, and is good to go. And then you take his shoe things apart here, um, which sometimes just come apart, and remove those. And then they turn into boomerangs. So you just give one in each hand, like this, like that. And now he's ready to become the master of stone, create tornadoes with boomerangs instead of with his feet. Um, he looks really cool like this. And I do like how he does have the boomerangs. Um, you know, the original Pohatu had uh, foot clubs. This whole thing was that he kicked instead of moving his arms. Um, they got rid of that for this version. I'm really glad they did. And instead gave him actual usable weapons, which are these boomerangs that also become foot things that he could kick with if he wanted to. But the whole gimmick with the original Pohatu is that he did an, had an upside-down body, made him shorter, and he kicked. This one actually can do things, and that's much appreciated. I do love this design a lot more, um, and I really like it overall because it gives him this cool look, plus his Australian accent in the animations mixed with his awesomeness in the animations. Makes Pohatu really cool. Now, while he's not necessarily the best of the Toho we've seen, he, he, he's definitely fun and interesting in his own right. Speaking of fun and interesting, that's certainly what Protector of Stone is. He's interesting. Uh, now, this guy here has a similar joint setup to Protector of Jungle, so he's highly articulated. He's got neck, el uh, shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, and ankles, the most articulation of these two guys. Uh, I also like the asymmetric design with these spikes here and this here. Kind of, you know, this is brown, this is silver, like Pohatu. Um, plus the spikes on his feet are pretty neat. And other than that, he doesn't really have a whole lot going for him. His mask is yellow, painted brown. Um, it, it's a brown color, it's just not a favorable color for a lot of things. But, you know, it works well. But what makes him kind of cool is that his Gatling gun is in a staff. Uh, using these same pieces that Protector of Ice had painted green, or cast in translucent green. He's got a Gatling gun. His Gatling gun is in a nice big staff weapon that has spikes on the end. So he can stab guys or he can shoot them from a distance, which I think is pretty neat. Um, plus he is able to dual wield it by design, uh, like this and like this. This gives him a lot of range for posability. I actually like these dual wielded weapons. It makes you think more creatively when you're trying to pose the figures. They also kind of shoot it into the ground as he is on his box art. That is possible. It's really nice when you can pull off the poses from the box art. Um, so you got that going on. Overall, this guy is really neat looking, um, just in concept and in design. The staff splits apart, and you can even just kind of have him, you know, at rest with the with the staff like this and his mask falling off and him going like that. And you know, he pretty much got that going on, which is also pretty cool. He's not as interesting as the as uh, Protector of Jungle and Earth, um, but he's definitely more interesting than Water, Ice, and Fire. And that's what makes him pretty cool. If you've been keeping up with these videos, then you know it's the time where we combine a Protector with a Toa to make Power Up Pohatu. So here is Power Up Pohatu, and it leaves behind three pieces that nicely stay together, which is cool, and we're just going to stick these there. Um, anyways, it's another combination where it leaves the protector, uh, unprotected, um, outside of his armor. In fact, Pohatu steals a piece of his armor. Anyways, as you can see, the boomerangs are now splayed out like that. Uh, the shoulder piece from the protector get added to Pohatu's arm armor. Uh, you could put it up here, I guess, and take his spikes and put them on his arm if you want more symmetrical look. Um, but that's officially how it's supposed to be. And here you get his staff, which has got added Pohatu's knife, and is a Gatling gun staff, and Pohatu can carry it around and stab things and use his gear system to just rock out. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, there's not much else to this uh, combination. He just kind of holds the staff. It's a little heavy, too, for him, so it kind of brings down his gear. I've noticed that with the single geared, the single uh, geared limb guys, the uh, weapons get a little heavy for them sometimes. Um, but anyways, that's the power-up mode. It's not, not the greatest, but it's not the worst either. Now, I said I was pretty much done talking about skull spiders in the last video, and that's untrue. 
Pohatu and the Protector of Stone come with their own unique skull spiders in that they have five legs. A fifth leg connecting to that empty slot up at the top of the mask, giving them the scorpion look. I like this a lot. Uh, in the animation, they even went further with Pohatu's animation showing the skull spiders all being this style, these blue ones with the hooks on the top, uh, the stingers. So it makes me think that the region of stone is inhabited with scorpion skull spiders, which is super cool. I like, I like the look of these, and I'm sad there's only two of them, but if I do like cannibalize a couple other skull spiders, I can make them all scorpions, uh, kind of like I did for the intro of this video. But anyways, um, I love the design of these. I love the added leg uh, to just kind of be a scorpion. It gives them a distinctive look, and I like that a lot. Fits the desert theme of the, of the stone region, so... Pretty neat overall. I, I really do enjoy them. And when I attach to a protector, it kind of gives it a little bit of an anglerfish look. Kind of neat. I like it a lot. Said that twice now about these spiders. These are my favorite skull spiders, alright? So overall, Pahatu, the Master of Stone, and the Protector of Stone are really solid sets. The only problem they have is they're not as interesting looking as the rest of the Toa. In terms of toy colors, brown is a boring color. There's not a whole lot you can do with the color, um, it's just kind of there. The, the brown and silver combination works really well, but it's still not the most appealing color, so when you're seeing it on a shelf, it's not going to be the one you gravitate towards instantly. I gotta say, these blue scorpion skull spiders just kind of make them a little bit more worth it. Um, you get an extra piece in each, which is fun. But yeah, now the thing is, is that, you know, the, the color is what, what honestly kind of detracts from a little bit, but... What they make up for is being really cool figures. Protector of Stone is quite articulated, uh, you know, being based on Protector of Jungle partially. Popatu is quite articulated, and he's a little shorter than the rest of the Toa, but makes up for it by having awesome boomerangs with Bilrock eyes attached to the end. And the asymmetrical design made an interesting build. I wasn't building the same arm twice. I had to build one and then the other. Makes it more interesting when you're building robots if the pieces are different, because... Then it's something different to build for each limb. So overall, I, I definitely recommend them. Uh, but Protector of Stone, not as not as not as clean as he's not as good as Jungle or Earth. Um, but he is number three. Like honestly, I like Earth, Jungle, and Stone protectors more than I do Fire, Ice, and Water. But anyways, that is it. We're out of Toa. We're out of protectors. Why is there one more day left in this week? Well. The Skull Spiders have to have someone to control them now, don't they? Tomorrow we'll be taking a look at the Lord of Skull Spiders. Anyways, be sure to check out Hirotaku.com for all your Bionicle news and more. Until next time, saying goodbye. I gotta say, these blue skull spiders with the scorpion tails knock over protectors really, really well.